President Biden issuing sweeping COVID vaccine requirements or weekly testing for federal workers and contractors, also companies with 100 employees or more. Now, U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy supporting the president's plan, saying the mandates are better for business. Take a look. Number one, the data tells us that these requirements work to increase vaccinations. Number two, a lot of businesses <clears throat> are actually relieved that these are going into place. And we've heard a lot of feedback from the Business Roundtable and others that this will help create safer workplaces. Joining us to discuss, constitutional attorney, professor emeritus of Harvard Law School, Alan Dershowitz, also the author of the book on your screen, Guilt by Accusation. Uh, professor, thanks for coming on today. Before we get to the Surgeon General's comments, I guess I'll ask you about this mandate from the president uh, when it comes to not only federal employees, contractors, but then also those private businesses. Is it legal? Well, I just, <laughs> I just finished writing a book on the subject called The Case for Vaccine Mandates, where I analyzed all the constitutional issues. There are three constitutional issues. Number one, does the federal government have authority over this? And the answer is yes, because it's interstate and COVID doesn't recognize boundaries. Number two, would a properly drafted, legislatively enacted mandate requiring vaccination be upheld by the courts? Probably yes. But the third is the hardest question, and that is, can the president through the Labor Department do this alone without legislative authority through OSHA? That's a hard question, and nobody knows how the courts will decide that. Anybody who tells you that the constitutional issues are crystal clear is exaggerating. We just don't know. Probably constitutional, but not certainly constitutional. Okay, so plenty of questions still remain. And quite frankly, a lot of business owners have questions, too, uh, about whether or not they would go through with this mandate, as, of course, mandated by the president. Uh, it's getting some pushback from several uh, Republican governors. Ohio Governor yeah. uh, DeWine calls President Biden's mandate a mistake. He tweeted this out. He expressed his concern, saying, I think the president made a mistake by announcing federal vaccine mandates. We should be focused on the science of preventing virus spread. The vaccine is our best tool to stop COVID. But people and business owners should make their own decisions about the vac vaccination. Uh, Professor, well, could you address those concerns? Again, yeah. the freedom to choose whether or not you want to get the vaccine. I don't think it's the decision of the person alone. Your previous guest was simply wrong when he said that vaccination only protects uh, the unvaccinated. No, no, I'm vaccinated and I'm not going into crowded places without masks. I'm 83 years old. I don't want to get COVID, even if it doesn't kill me or hospitalize me. Vaccinated people are at risk, lower risk, but risk to be sure. Moreover, if unvaccinated people get massive amounts of COVID, they fill the emergency wards, they fill the ICU units, they prevent other people from getting medical care. So this is a concern that goes beyond individual choice. If this were a vaccine that prevented only cancer or heart disease, which are not communicable, uh, then there would be a really serious constitutional issue. But this is a vaccine that does help prevent the transmission of the illness to other people, both the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. That's what makes it a much closer constitutional question. And nobody should say for sure that they know the absolute answer to this. It's, it's a work in progress. We've never had this issue before. There is a Supreme Court decision in 1905, but it's a state case, $5 fine, mm -hmm. smallpox. This is very different. Will the Supreme Court follow that precedent? Probably, but not certainly. Well, I want to pose this question to you, and I fully understand coronavirus is different than the flu. Uh, but you sure. think about the annual flu shot as well, and we haven't had businesses, uh, perhaps some have chosen to require that of their employees, but we haven't seen the president require businesses with 100 plus employees get the flu shot for their employees to work in the building. Uh, how is this different, and how do you think that could change the challenges? Well, the science says it's different. The science says that COVID is more uh, serious and more lethal and more deadly. And I leave it up to the scientists. I'm not an expert on the difference between the flu and COVID, um, but I think it's a reasonable distinction to make. Now, you can ask me the next hard question. What if the federal government mandated flu vaccines? That would pose right. a more difficult question. But right now, it's only COVID. And I do think that the courts, although you never know, with this court, you just never know, uh, would uphold a properly drawn limited mandate with exceptions. They have to be medical exceptions, 
perhaps, we're not sure, religious exemptions. I deal with that in, in my book. But these are all questions that are more appropriately left to the legislative than the executive branch. I would hope that President Biden would also seek to introduce legislation that Congress could pass, he could then sign, and the Supreme Court could uphold. It's so much better if all three branches of government make a monumental decision like this rather than just one branch of the government. That's better politics and better constitutional law. Okay. Really interesting legal analysis uh, from Alan Dershowitz on the program this morning. Again, waiting to see perhaps what the higher court might decide. Alan, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.